everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. I'm back with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. This time we are going to look at a Cobra vehicle. I've been kind of wanting to get back to doing the vehicles and I wanted to give Cobra a shot. So we're going to look at the 1984 Cobra water moccasin. This was of course a watercraft and it had a driver, Copperhead, and Copperhead had a variant. And we're going to look at the variant of the Copperhead figure as well. This is the Cobra Water Moccasin. It was first sold in 1984. It was also sold in 1985. It was discontinued in 1986. Uh, as for a replacement in 1986, the closest equivalent uh, Cobra Watercraft was the Hydro Sled, but it wasn't really similar to the Water Moccasin. It was much smaller. In 1985, we got the Cobra Moray Hydrofoil, but that was quite a bit bigger than the Water Moccasin. So for a while, the Water Moccasin was Cobra's primary attack boat and it was really the only medium-sized watercraft we had for Cobra for quite some time. The Cobra water moccasin was worth three flag points and it came with the driver Copperhead and there was a variant of Copperhead. I'm gonna look at the action figures a little bit later so I'm gonna set both of them aside for now. The box for the water moccasin describes it as a swamp cruiser and for some reason in 1984 there was kind of a swamp theme because in that same year we got Zartan and his swamp skier. The water moccasin is what's known as an airboat or a fan boat, meaning it's a flat bottom boat that is powered by an aircraft style propeller and it's good for marshes and shallow water. Let's look at the parts and the features of the water moccasin and right up front you see it has this double bow which I think is supposed to look like a drag boat. It definitely kind of evokes that theme. I'm not sure really if that would be useful in a swamp boat but it kind of gives it a unique look. On the side instead of having the typical Cobra sigil we have this water moccasin emblem which I think looks really cool. It's kind of a, a snake with a machine gun and we have that on both sides. I, I kind of think this would make a pretty cool tattoo. We have two 44 millimeter lateral destructor cannons to bring a little forward facing firepower to this vehicle. It has this windshield with an asymmetrical design which I kind of like and it has this removable roof panel. Inside the cockpit we have some very nice sculpted detail, a nicely sculpted seat uh, with some control panels. Uh, re looks really good on the inside. The main weapon on this vehicle is this turret with these 20 millimeter twin machine guns and the turret does rotate, uh, doesn't go all the way around. The machine gun does elevate a little bit uh, and it has this kind of joystick style controller and that part is frequently broken off. Even on mine you can see it's bent. It should be uh, straight up and down. You see a lot of these with that totally gone. So if you're looking for a water moccasin, keep an eye out for that. Uh, make sure that's not broken. There is no seat inside the turret. There's just this bar that goes between the action figure's legs to hold the figure in place. And of course that works fine for a toy, but in real life that would be pretty uncomfortable. On both sides we have these storage bins and they have covers that pop off and it's just an empty space you can store accessories or weapons in there it's not very big so you couldn't store very much but it's nice to have a little storage space I do have a little bit of a problem with these bins they the covers don't exactly seem to want to stay on when you put them on in the way that seems the most natural it, it kind of leaves a gap here at the top um, I have found that uh, the best way to keep these on is to uh, put them in like this the bottom tabs first and then kind of pull up and push in at the same time and it sort of wedges it in better and it uh, it holds it on better but for some reason I don't know if it's just mine but these hatches just don't want to fit in like I think they should I don't know if I'm the only one who has that problem with the bin covers but I do have two water moccasins and they both seem to have that problem so uh, if you have one of these and you also have that problem let me know or if you don't of course let me know as well uh, maybe it's just my copies on either side it has has these platforms, these troop carrying platforms, and they have foot pegs, and that's so a couple extra figures could ride along on the side. 
We have a removable engine cover. Um, has some detail on the cover and we remove that. We can see some engine detail. And the blueprints for this vehicle call this engine a twin supercharged Destro V12. Uh, Destro was Cobra's weapon supplier, so I'm guessing this engine is named after Destro. If I ever build an engine, I'll name it after Destro. It's a pretty cool name. Here we have a drive wheel for the fan. Uh, you just spin that and it causes the fan to spin. This isn't battery powered or anything. If you want the fan to spin, you have to do it manually. Around the fan, we have this black cowling and steering vanes. And the steering vanes move left to right uh, for directional control. And they're connected by this bar. And this is a frequently broken part. Uh, often you'll find either the bar is broken or the tab on the steering vane uh, where the bar goes on is totally broken off. So watch out for that. On my other water moccasin, one of the tabs is broken off. So I did a little do-it-yourself fix-it job and it worked just fine. On the bottom of the water moccasin I have two things to show you. The first thing is this name label. It has the name Lane on it. Lane is probably the original owner of this vehicle. So Lane, wherever you are out there, thank you for sending this vehicle into the marketplace so I could get it. I promise I will take good care of it. The other thing is what the blueprints call a Gator Surface Torpedo and it pegs here on the back here and uh, it's, it's a surface torpedo. This is kind of a weird little thing. It has a clear plastic shell and skis. Uh, it pegs on right there and uh, I don't know. Honestly, I never really used this when I had a water moccasin as a kid. Uh, it is rear facing so I guess you're intended to shoot it out the back and uh, hit you know some vehicle that's following behind you. But uh, I don't know. Not a great accessory I think. Not a great weapon. Uh, just sort of an extra and I you know it's nice that Hasbro put these little extras on there but this one, I just don't know how useful it is. It does get lost frequently, so there's that. Uh, it pegs on the bottom, but it doesn't peg all that solidly, so it will fall off if you're moving this thing around very much. Let's look at how to put Copperhead in the water moccasin, because it can be a little bit tricky. First, you need to move the turret out of the way, and then you need to take off this roof panel. Uh, and then you gotta slide him in, and these bars here are actually too narrow uh, for him to go in straight, so you kinda have to angle him until you get his shoulders past those bars and then straighten them out and there you go and as you can see he doesn't sit all the way in that's why there's an opening on the roof panel you put that in and uh, there you go he's ready to drive as you can see, the vehicle is kind of a teal color, and that's an unusual choice. It's not your typical black Cobra vehicle, or it's not like a camouflage green or anything like that. I don't know if teal is somehow associated with the swamps, but it does closely match the color on the action figure driver, and it's kind of similar to the color of a later G.I. Joe Swamp Fighter muskrat. Let's look at the water moccasin driver Copperhead, and we have two figures to look at. Both of these are considered to be the same version of Copperhead, but we have a variant. I'll take a look at the differences between these two figures in a minute, but first let's focus on the most common version of Copperhead. Copperhead came with no accessories, so let's jump right into looking at his articulation. He had the typical articulation for 1984 G.I. Joe action figures, meaning he could turn his head from left to right, he could move his arm at the shoulder up about so far, and he could swivel it all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow, he could move at the elbow about 90 degrees and he had a swivel at the bicep he could swivel his arm all the way around the figure was held together with a rubber o-ring so he could move at the torso a little bit he could move his legs apart about so far he could move his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and he could bend at the knee about 90 degrees let's look at the sculpt design and color of copperhead and his color is meant to match the vehicle that he drives but with some lighter green thrown in just for contrast um, on his head he's wearing a helmet uh, has a ridge top up there and it's got a mask over his face. On his chest he's wearing a teal tank top with a silver cobra sigil on it. Now this silver paint is easily rubbed off so you'll have to watch out for that if you're looking for a copper head. Uh, you could run into one where part or all of that silver cobra symbol is scraped away. He has a black holster
holster for a pistol and a strap that continues around to his back. Copperhead is barrel chested. He's got an extra wide chest, but what I think is interesting is he's not sculpted to be particularly muscular. I mean, he's a big guy, but he's not ripped. He doesn't look like he, you know, just came out of the gym looking like Hulk Hogan. He's kind of doughy looking. He looks almost maybe, you know, slightly pudgy or overweight. On his arms, he has these light green bands and he has light green gloves. And that is the primary difference between the most common version of Copperhead and the variant. You can see the variant has dark gloves and dark uh, armbands. Uh, the variant's uh, colors m cl more closely match the teal than the light green color. Uh, and you can see that's also on his helmet. Essentially, as far as the paint application goes, on the variant, anywhere where there was light green paint, it's painted with just that uh, same teal color. The variant of Copperhead with the dark green gloves is considered more rare than the regular Copperhead. And so if you're looking for one, you will pay more for the variant. Uh, so if you're looking for variants and you don't want to spend a lot of money, this is one that you may skip, especially if just a color difference like that uh, isn't very important to you. On his waist piece, Copperhead is wearing black stud panties. At least that's what it looks like to me. I mean, look at it. It looks like he's wearing black leather panties with studs on him. He's got a belt buckle. It looks like some kind of S&M gear. Now, I guess this could be some kind of harness, but honestly, what kind of harness would that be? I mean, it doesn't, like, go over his shoulders or anything like that. It doesn't seem to connect to anything. It's got this solid black piece on his butt. Uh, looks like panties to me and so that's what I'm going with. On his legs he has two different colors. On the outside he has the same teal color and on the inside he has the light green color that matches his gloves. Uh, and on the inside of his legs are padded it looks like. On his right leg he has another pistol holster on a strap there. It's black and it has this little sculpted detail on the top and I really don't know what that's supposed to be. On his left leg he has this light green thingy that seems to just be there for decoration. It doesn't seem to have any function at all. And finally he has some pretty wicked looking black leather boots with some buckles on them and that looks pretty cool. Let's take a look at Copperhead's file card and this file card was printed on the back of the box that the water moccasin came in. There's nothing on the other side. It's just the back of a box. Over here we have a portrait of Copperhead. This would have been from the artwork from the front of the box and it has his faction as Cobra. It says he's the water moccasin pilot and his code name is Copperhead. His file name is classified. His birthplace is unknown. His military specialty is air driver swamp vehicle operator. One thing I find interesting about Copperhead is he is not intended to be an army builder. He is intended to be an individual, much like Wild Weasel. Although Cobra would have had many water moccasins, presumably driven by Cobra troopers, there's supposed to be only one Copperhead. This section says, it is presumed that Copperhead is native or otherwise intimately familiar with the Florida Everglades. Intelligence sources venture a guess that he raced speedboats in high stakes races in Monaco and Japan. His major weakness is gambling. Odds are that he got started by placing bets on his own races. Apparently, he compounded his folly by selling his services to Cobra in hopes of paying off his bookies. In this bottom section we have a quote by Gung Ho, and Gung Ho is a G.I. Joe character who also has his origins in the swamp. Gung Ho is a Louisiana Cajun. Gung Ho says, sure, I know the type. They're all around the Gulf Coast. Trash. Drifters. They can drive a swamp buggy like the devil himself. Rebuild a V8 with a coat hanger and spit. Fight all night and raise cane to the cock crows. They got a heart full of gimme and a mouth full of much obliged. That sounds like a very down-home folksy saying, and I have no no idea what it means. The Cobra water moccasin hit retail stores in 1984, but G.I. Joe also had a new watercraft that was introduced in 1984. So how does the G.I. Joe water vehicle stack up to the water moccasin? Well, of course, the G.I. Joe 1984 vehicle was the killer whale. Not exactly a fair fight. Let's compare the water moccasin to the G.I. Joe counterpart from 1984. And even though they are very different vehicles, they still take some design cues from each other. For instance, the killer whale has these huge cannons on the side. And so does the water moccasin, but the water moccasin's cannons are tiny by comparison. The killer whale has two machine gun turrets with larger machine guns. Water moccasin has one turret, and by comparison, its machine gun looks pretty puny. 
Rooney. The water moccasin has one fan with a manual wheel to turn the fan blades. The killer whale has two fans with an action feature that turns both fans at the same time. The water moccasin has a cockpit that only barely has enough room to fit the driver, and the killer whale has this conning tower with a room for two action figures. The water moccasin has these platforms for troops to ride along, whereas the killer whale has an entire troop carrying compartment. The water moccasin has this surface torpedo, whatever that's supposed to be, whereas the killer whale has a spring-loaded recon sled. It's like when they designed the water moccasin, they just took the killer whale, cut it to about one-sixth the size, and put about half the features on it. But if you think about it, that's not too bad. The water moccasin actually has quite a few features for the size of vehicle it has, and standing by itself, not in comparison to the enormous killer whale, it really is not a bad watercraft. But of course, Cobra wouldn't send one water moccasin against the killer whale, it would send a whole fleet. So what the water moccasin lacks in size, it makes up for in numbers. Can it float? Why yes, yes it can, very well in fact. I did notice, however, that after a couple minutes, mine starts to take on some water in the back and then it starts to sink. Now on mine, there's not a very good seal between the top half and the bottom half, and that probably accounts for that. Uh, if you have an example of the water moccasin that it has a good seal on those pieces, then it shouldn't sink, uh, but mine does have a little bit of trouble. Let's look at Copperhead and the water moccasin overall. Uh, first of all, Copperhead always struck me as oddly kind of feminine. I'm not sure if it's the teal tank top or the man boobs or maybe the black panties that he wears on the outside of his clothes, but he does strike me as somewhat feminine. And you know what? That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And honestly, his costume is not as weird as some fashions in the 80s. In fact, I wouldn't want to put up any photographs of what I looked like in the 80s. The water moccasin is an excellent water vehicle. It's medium size, but it has a lot of features crammed into it, and it's fun to play with. It's a very nice addition to the Cobra arsenal. That was my review of the 1984 Cobra water moccasin and the driver Copperhead and the variant of Copperhead and his file card I hope you enjoyed it, and if you're thinking of getting a water moccasin and a copperhead, I hope you found this video informative. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe, and don't forget to like the Facebook page. You get a lot of updates there that you don't get anywhere else. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you with the next G.I. Joe review video. Fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe! Cobra's still in the capsule! They're getting away in the water moccasin! And with him are the evil new Cobras, Firefly, Scrap Iron, and the Baroness. The shark will catch him. G.I. Joe! American hero! They're throwing the capsule overboard! Let's go get it! Way to go, Joe! Go, Joe! G.I. Joe Shark comes with Diver. Water Moccasin comes with Driver. Other figures sold separately from Hasbro.